The path to mastery really only comes from curiosity and passion, never from perfection. People are bombarded with images every time they turn on their phone or computer or whatnot. Your role as a photographer is to cut through that and to elevate your imagery to be so compelling that the viewer can't help but be drawn further in. We don't have moving imagery to compel a viewer. We have a single frame. Now the real art for you is to look at the steps the many, many steps that go into creating that image that works in a millisecond. And that is not a millisecond process. And for me, it's never the snap of a single frame. As you look to raise the bar with your imagery, one of the biggest ways you can do this is to build trust and build a relationship with your subject. If you haven't done it before, spend some time on the other side of the lens being photographed in front of a you know, large DSLR camera. It can be intimidating, and it's really helpful to, to know that and to carry that when you as a photographer are working with a subject. For a lot of people I've photographed, it was their first time in front of a DSLR camera, particularly a lot of the farmers I photographed around the country. And one of my biggest goals to capturing them authentically was just to get them to feel comfortable. A big shift that will help your interaction with subjects is to make it very clear that you care above all about how they look to themselves. Share the images and say, hey, you know, a lot of people say they don't like how they look on camera. I think you look great. I think you're doing great today. And I think you'll find as you begin to share your images, as you create them with your subject and make them a real co-creator with the process, that you have the ability to push them further than they ever would have allowed you before. Together, you'll be able to create a performance that is far better than either of you could have created on your own. I think one of the most compelling styles of photography is the environmental portrait. It's hard to pull off well because it requires a great interaction and performance from your subject and a perfectly composed frame that tells layers of stories in the background. One suggestion I have is to think about building your image from the background forward. So find your background layers, and that will inform where you place your subject. For example, with this workwear image I shot at a timber mill, we started with the mountain, we started with a stormy day, and also then positioning with some stacks of wood and timber. Very often you wanna place your subject in a, in a heroic position, and by that I mean you wanna take a lower angle stance. Maybe your camera's at about waist level to your subject, that puts them up. It shows that they're important instantly to a viewer. Another tip you can keep in your back pocket is to think about adding additional people into your frame who aren't even in focus, but add extra energy and draw the viewer's eye deeper into the frame. So for example, the wildfire fighting image that I shot, we started with the obvious piece, which is a large wildfire blaze. This was a controlled burn that we were working with. And then I layered the image with in the middle distance background, a second wild firefighter who's purposely out of focus, but whose commanding gaze draws the viewer in. And then we have our hero, the firefighter, in a portrait. So it's really several layers to the piece that create a powerful environmental portrait. One of the big personal developments that you'll make is to learn how to fail frequently and often and to learn from that in the revision process of your imagery. When you're out in the field photographing, be willing to try five or six different compositions, different frames, different lenses quickly, and that will help refine your process. You need to be comfortable sharing your shortcomings or sharing your failure, as it were, with your subject or with your team and working through that. And as soon as you open that door, your work will get better faster. And for me, the mark of success is not how often I fail, it's how often I get back up and try again, and I'm willing to critique my work, nitpick, 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 every step of the way. I wanna open your eyes to the process of creating art that doesn't end when the shutter closes. 
for my workflow, there's so much fun experimentation and artistry that goes into processing and retouching an image after. When I was shooting with the Canon R camera of the motorcycle couple in Denver, we had them on the back of a motorcycle worrying by a brick building. And we ended up changing a lot of that in post. And the retouching process can add shadow, add motion, blurring, maybe focusing sharpness where we want the viewer's eye to go to a subject. We can accentuate color at certain areas, remove saturation in others. And really what you're going for is not, does this image look pretty and have all the right rules of thirds and compositional elements? The question you always need to ask yourself is, does this grab me before I even know that I'm hooked? I hope these tips really inspire you as a photographer to grow in your craft and to feel more empowered to connect to people, to connect to nature, and to capture the beauty of our human experience in a single frame.